Emergencies, Injuries and Illnesses By watching this video, you will learn to Define Emergency, Injury and Illness Main Common Emergencies, Injuries and Illnesses and Describe what happens to the body during common emergencies, injuries and illnesses. Let's start by defining medical emergency as any serious and unexpected situation or condition that requires immediate medical attention. Without immediate attention, the emergency can cause severe and long-term harm to a person's health or lead to his or her death. Medical emergencies usually involve injuries or illnesses. An injury is physical harm or damage to the body caused by an external force. Any part of the body can be injured. Also, injuries may be intentional or unintentional. Then, to keep things simple, we'll define illness as a condition that prevents the body or mind from working in a normal way. The word illness is often used interchangeably with disease and sickness. But it's important to note that these three terms do not have exactly the same meaning. Here are the common emergencies, injuries, and illnesses we'll discuss in this video. First on our list is asthma attack. An asthma attack happens when the muscles around the airways and the lungs become tighter and narrower than normal. As a result, breathing becomes difficult, noisy, rapid, and or shallow. Next is animal bite. It's a break in the skin caused by animal teeth. It also includes bruises from too much pressure on body tissue from the bite. On the other hand, an insect bite occurs when an insect breaks someone's skin using its mouth, usually so that it can feed. Examples of insects that bite are mosquitoes, fleas, bedbugs, and lice. Insect bites can make the affected area red, swollen, painful, itchy, and or hot. In contrast, an insect sting happens when an insect uses another body part, such as a stinger at its tail end to pierce the skin and inject a poisonous substance called venom. Insects usually sting to defend themselves. Stinger insects include wasps, bees, and fire ants. Although insect stings affect the skin in more or less the same way that insect bites do, stings are normally more painful than bites. Moving on, we have bleeding, which refers to the loss of blood from the body. Bleeding may be external or internal. Another word for bleeding is hemorrhage. Then we have bruises. A bruise happens when tiny blood vessels called capillaries break. As a result, blood gets trapped below the skin's surface. A bruise appears as a black and blue or red to purple mark on the skin. Bruises are also called contusions. Burns are another type of injury. A burn is skin damage due to dry heat from flames, electricity, lightning, chemicals, or radiation. Burns can be first, second, third, or fourth degree depending on what skin layers are damaged. Among these four types, first-degree burns are the most minor, while fourth-degree burns are the most severe. Like a burn, a scald is skin damage due to heat. But scalds are caused by moist heat, for example, hot water. 
Next on our list is choking. As shown in the video, choking happens when a piece of food, bone, or another object gets stuck in the airway and blocks the flow of air, thus making the person unable to breathe. Injuries include concussions, which are caused by a severe bump or blow to the head, or by a hit to the body that makes the head and brain move quickly back and forth. A concussion leads to usually temporary effects, such as headaches and problems with memory, balance, and concentration. We can also call a concussion a mild traumatic brain injury. Next, a convulsion is an event in which normal brain activity is disturbed. This makes muscles contract in an involuntary way, leading to sudden, violent, and irregular body movements. A serious accident, a drug overdose, a high fever, or epilepsy can cause a convulsion. Another word for convulsion is fit. Now let's talk about cramps. A cramp happens when one or more muscles tighten in a sudden and unexpected way, causing sharp pains. This type of injury can be caused by a lack of body fluid, or by exercising or working hard in very hot or very cold conditions. Also on our list is diarrhea. People have diarrhea when loose, watery stools come out of their bodies several times a day. Common causes of diarrhea include bacteria or viruses, certain foods or ingredients, medications, and surgery. Diarrhea may be acute or chronic. Lastly, diarrhea can increase the risk of dehydration. Dehydration occurs when the body loses too much water. As a result, the body is unable to perform its normal functions. Then, we have injuries called dislocations. A dislocation involves a bone that gets pushed out of its normal position in a joint. It's usually caused by vehicle accidents, sports activities, and falls. Common emergencies include drowning. Drowning is a process in which water enters the airway and blocks air supply when someone is underwater. This makes the person unable to breathe, thus stopping the flow of oxygen to the systems of the body. Drowning can be fatal or non-fatal. Earlier, we mentioned drug overdose as one of the causes of convulsions. Drug overdose refers to using or taking a substance in amounts that are much greater than recommended. The substance could be prescribed by the doctor, over-the-counter, legal, or illegal. An electric shock is another common emergency. It occurs when an electric current touches or flows through the body. An electric shock can burn external and internal tissue and lead to organ damage. As for epilepsy, it's a disorder of the nervous system involving abnormal brain activity. This condition leads to periods of uncontrolled shaking movements, unusual behavior and feelings, and loss of consciousness. Let's move on to fainting. Fainting is the loss of consciousness for a short period of time, 
due to a drop in blood flow to, and a lack of oxygen in the brain. Many factors can lead to fainting, including hypoglycemia, dehydration, too much tiredness, anxiety, emotional shock, and certain drugs or alcohol. Fainting is also known as syncope, or passing out. Now let's discuss fractures. A fracture is a broken bone. Fractures can be closed or open, depending on whether they break the skin or not. They can also be incomplete or complete, based on how damaged the bone is. There's also a type of injury called frostbite. It occurs when very low temperatures make the small blood vessels tighter and narrower, thus preventing the flow of blood to various parts of the body. This makes the skin and or other tissues freeze. Frostbite typically affects the fingers, toes, nose, ears, cheeks, and chin. Another item on our list is gastroenteritis, which is the irritation and inflammation of the stomach and intestines due to a bacterial or viral infection. Gastroenteritis can cause severe diarrhea, vomiting, and dehydration. Let's now talk about heart attacks. A heart attack happens when the flow of blood to the heart is blocked or greatly reduced because of a buildup of fat, cholesterol, and other substances in a coronary artery. A heart attack is also called a myocardial infarction. Then, we have heat exhaustion. This happens when the body gets too hot because of physical activity and or a hot environment. If heat exhaustion is not treated, it can lead to heat stroke. Heat stroke happens when the body temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius or higher. This means that the body cannot control its own temperature anymore. This medical emergency can quickly lead to organ damage or death if not treated. Next is hypoglycemia. This is a condition in which blood sugar, or glucose, drops below normal levels. It's commonly caused by too much insulin or other medications for diabetes, drinking too much alcohol, hormone problems, and skipping meals or having meals later than usual. Someone with hypoglycemia can have pale skin or can experience sweating shaking, weakness, a rapid heartbeat, and feeling dizzy, irritated, or anxious. A while ago, we discussed heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Another condition related to temperature is hypothermia. But this condition involves the core body temperature falling below normal levels, usually below 35 degrees Celsius. Hypothermia is often caused by exposure to very cold, wet, or windy conditions for a long time. A lot of us have had nosebleeds before. A nosebleed occurs when blood flows from one or both nostrils. Dry and or cold air foreign objects stuck in the nose, chemicals, and allergies are among the common causes of nosebleeds. But in some cases, they are caused by high blood pressure or disease. A nosebleed is also called an epistaxis. Poisoning is another common emergency. It happens when a substance harmful to the body is swallowed, inhaled, injected, or absorbed through the skin leading to injury or death. Then, we have sprains, 
Another common injury. Sprain refers to the stretching or tearing of ligaments. It usually happens when a sudden movement forces the joint to move out of its normal range. Sprains most commonly affect the ankles, but they occur to other body parts as well. On the other hand, a strain is an injury to a muscle, tendon, or both. Strains, which may be minor or severe, are sometimes called pulled muscles. Now let's talk about stroke. This life-threatening condition happens when a blood vessel in the brain breaks and bleeds, or when the flow of blood to the brain is blocked. As a result, oxygen cannot reach the tissues in the brain. Stroke is one of the leading causes of death and disability in the world. Moving on, suffocation happens when someone is unable to breathe, which leads to a lack of oxygen in the body. Among the causes of suffocation are asthma, drowning, choking, drug overdose, and inhaling chemicals. Suffocation can lead to loss of consciousness, brain injury, and death. Another word for suffocation is asphyxiation. The second to the last item on our list is sunburn. Sunburn refers to red, painful, and swollen skin that feels hot to the touch. People can get it from too much exposure to ultraviolet radiation, typically from the sun. Finally, we have wounds. A wound is a break in body tissue. It's usually caused by falls and accidents involving vehicles or sharp objects. A wound is closed when it damages parts of the body below the skin surface, but does not harm the skin itself. A bruise is an example of a closed wound. In contrast, an open wound is a break in the skin that exposes the internal tissue to the outside environment. There are four types of open wounds. They are abrasion, laceration, puncture, and avulsion. Summary First, a medical emergency is any serious and unexpected situation or condition that requires immediate medical attention. Second, an injury is physical harm or damage to the body caused by an external force. Third, an illness is a condition that prevents the body or mind from working in a normal way. Fourth, here are common emergencies, injuries, and illnesses. Let's take a quiz to check your understanding. You will see the correct answers toward the end of the video. 1. Identify if the statement is true or false. 2. Unscramble the letters to name the following injury. 3. Fill in the blank with the correct word for an injury. 4. Choose the correct answer. Five. Choose the correct answer. Six. Match the items in the left column with the correct items in the right column. Seven. Choose the correct answer. Eight. Choose the correct answer.
9. Choose the correct answer. Ten. Match the items in the left column with the correct items in the right column. Good job on completing the quiz. Here are the correct answers.